Well, hello friends and welcome back to the series on this um, bamboo shank pipe that we're working on for my friend Father Anthony. Uh, so the first order of business as we uh, begin to deconstruct this pipe in order to prepare it to mate up with its new bowl is we're going to have to get this bowl off. And I want to do that as gently as possible to kind of preserve the uh, stainless steel tubing connection and, and see if we can understand exactly how this is hooked up so that we can uh, use a similar uh, method of attaching the new stum. So I'm going to apply heat and see if I can get that to loosen up whatever uh, adhesive is used in there and I'll bring you back once I have it uh, cleared up. Well that was fairly easy. Um, a little bit of heat and it loosened right up and as you can see I'm, I'm a bit surprised by what we've got here. This is not a stainless steel tubing, a piece of stainless steel tubing at all. Um, I think it's vulcanite, uh, but I could be wrong about that. It might be some other material, but I but I do think it's it's made of ebonite, and it's just basically a tube that's inserted on both ends, and this almost fits on like a like a stem would. Um, very very interesting. In here, I don't know if I can get you enough light to really see down in there. Uh, it's it's this ring of ebonite that's just really decorative. Uh, just helps make that transition and right inside of that is bamboo so the connection here was simply a bit of ebonite to bamboo with some adhesive it does look like they did a better job on this end at least there seems to be some more um, some some rifling of the the surface there so they they scratched it up or threaded it or some such in order to give the epoxy or whatever uh, glue they used something to bite onto. So that's probably why it came off from here uh, rather than from the stumble end. At any rate, we can set this aside and uh, we'll have to think about how we're going to make this connection because uh, there's nothing wrong with making it in ebonite. Um, I just was expecting stainless steel tubing. But given the tolerances we're working with and the fact that this is already drilled, we might have to resort to something like this where we can machine it to whatever size we want. At any rate, the wall goes aside now and we can move on to trying to uh, work through what we're doing here. Now, as I said earlier, or as I said in the last video, our, our plan is to have this probably intersect something like that so we'll cut this somewhere right in here and it'll mate up pretty close to, to there on the bowl and it might be a little bit too high for you to see so let me do that again so our plan is to cut the bamboo somewhere around here and cut the stumble somewhere around there and have those two made up um, I've already done some measurements and that'll work out pretty well. So we'll just have to see if we can make the connection. So I think the next step then is going to be to cut the bamboo, get it faced off uh, flat, and make the ebonite transition piece that will go, that will attach to the bamboo and can then be attached, fit to, to, to fit flush with the stumble. And then we'll deal with a interconnection, uh, either a, an ebonite sleeve similar to this or a piece of stainless steel tubing that will make the, the final airway connection for the two. So I'm going to give that some thought. I'm going to probably, I'll cut this. I need to give some thought to how we're going to machine it and uh, I'll bring you back once I've got an idea on uh, what the next step is really going to look like. All right, I spent some time fussing around with uh, with measurements of, of this and, and this and I decided that it is Time to cut the bamboo. Um, so I know approximately where I want it cut. Um, this is, so I've put this in here just as a, piece, a reference piece. This is actually the stem end, and I just want something to, that I know is the central axis that I can look at while I'm, while I'm cutting it. So we're gonna be cutting it between these two nodes right here, and pretty close to the center of, of that uh, that, that uh, internodal spot. So we're just going to place it in a miter box like so 
and I've got a very sharp razor saw that I will use to slice through it. I'm going to have to do that off camera simply because this has to be hooked on the end of the bench and I can't get the camera over there. So I'll do that off camera and I'll bring you back once the, uh, the bamboo is in too. Well, Father Anthony, if you wanted to start to get nervous, this is probably the time. So I have cut the shank, as you can see. Um, Use the razor saw so that we got a relatively smooth surface, but there is a little bit of fraying around the edges, which is unavoidable. Um, that's okay because we're going to face this off on the lathe. Now, this is this is actually going to be pretty challenging because obviously there's nothing to clamp to here, right? I mean, this is a very odd size, but as you can see, I've got this drill rod, um, which is fitting very tightly. So I think. I'm going to be able to clamp the drill rod in the lathe, chuck the drill rod in the lathe and spin this and take very, very uh, slight cuts off of it to face off the, the front of that and get it perfectly um, at 90 degrees to this axis here. Which means if I can then drill this to accept a piece of stainless steel tubing, that stainless steel tubing will also be um, perfectly concentric with this and then if we bring a we bring the stummel in similarly drilled we should be able to get a perfect 90 degree match between the two now in reality that's probably not going to be perfect so we're going to have to do a little bit of fudging and that's why we're going to put that ebonite spacer between the two because we can easily shape the ebonite one way or the other and have it uh, be there to sort of fill the gaps between the two. So uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to record the lathe work just because it's um, somewhat boring and uh, I, I need to really concentrate on this one. Uh, so I want to, you know, give it my full attention, not have to worry about the camera and everything. So I will do the lathe work. Um, oh, one other thing is I'm going to have to drill this, as I said. And as you can see, the airway is not even close to uh, being in the center. Now, that's not the fault of the maker at all, because the way <laughs> these things work is that the, the bamboo creates the airway. You know, you, the, the maker is just drilling out the, the, the nodes, which are the only obstructions as you, as you go through here. So this part was already made by nature and there was nothing that could be done about it but of course to get everything concentric on the airway uh, I'm sorry to get everything concentric on this axis which is not necessarily the airway but it's where the stem is going in this is going to need to be drilled off center a bit and that's okay as long as everything uh, overlaps sufficiently that there's not going to be any rough pockets in there and I can go in and, and smooth those out uh, as, as things develop. So we'll be okay. Um, so I got to see what kind of stainless steel tubing I have in stock, figure out where I'm going to, how I'm going to drill this, face it off, drill it, and I'll bring you back after that. All right, well, after some uh, frankly nerve wracking lathe work, we are uh, in business. So what I've done is I've, I've faced off the end of this so that it is actually 90 degrees to this axis. So it may not look straight relative to the nodes and all that, but that doesn't matter. We want to make sure that it's straight relative to the airway. And it is, if I stand this up, and there's no way that you can see this, um, but yeah, let me see if I can actually demonstrate this. So if I stand this here, this is a machinist square. Uh, hopefully you can see that that is pretty much running dead on parallel, uh, which is what we want. Now, the other thing that I did on the lathe was I opened up this airway, uh, again, keeping it concentric with this axis. And I increased that to, I believe it was 3 16 of an inch, because I have some thin wall 3 16 inch stainless steel tubing. And you can see that that fits in there nicely. Uh, I drilled it in about a half an inch, uh, so it's, it'll be plenty of surface to, to bond that in there. Uh, we'll cut this off at about a half inch here, so there'll be a one inch piece uh, sticking out. And then we begin to work on this guy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
cut this, prepare the surfaces a little bit. I have to rough things up a bit and I'll bring you back before I put in the epoxy. So what we've done here is we, uh, we took that long piece of stainless steel tubing that I had, uh, which is, by the way, this is a uh, medical grade thin walled stainless steel tubing. So it's perfect for this application. And I've used it in, in quite a few pipes that had issues with uh, shanks burning out and things like that, or shanks cracking and they needed additional reinforcement. And I've never had a gurgling problem myself or reports of a gurgling problem. So I think that you know, people worry about that because there's a piece of metal in there, but I, I really don't think it matters that much. Uh, so at any rate, I don't expect this to be a problem at all. And I think it'll be a much more secure connection than uh, a piece of ebonite would provide or, or Delrin. So what I've done is I, I cut it with a hacksaw and then uh, faced it off and chamfered it on the lathe so there's no sharp edges. I also did a little bit of knurling here just to give the epoxy something to bite to. Um, and we'll have to eventually knurl up this end as well. We won't be able to do that in the lathe. Uh, we could just do it with a file. Um, but I did leave this a little bit long. So this is going to go in um, a half an inch. And what's left is, is close to three quarters of an inch. I don't know how much we're going to need here. It's going to depend on what we do with the stummel. And it's also going to depend on the thickness of the ebonite spacer that we're going to put in here. So I figure I'll leave this long for now. We can always trim it off later. But right now, if I can get this back out, there we go. Uh, we're going to epoxy this in place. So I already told you I knurled this. I also went inside here, and I'm not going to be able to show you, but I, I just used this uh, dental pick and went in and, and dimpled the, the surface here. Normally I do that with something like a Dremel tool, but uh, bamboo is soft enough that it was possible to just kind of pockmark it with this, and, and it'll hold fine. Also, bamboo is a bit more porous than briar, so I don't see there's going to be any problem. So we're going to take, this is uh, the G-Flex epoxy. This is G-Flex uh, 655, I believe. Check that for you. Yeah, 655. Uh, very good epoxy. I, I use it for everything now, pretty much. And first thing we're going to do is smear a little bit on the inner walls here. And it's always best, in my opinion, to put a little bit more than you need, and we will clean it up. You'll see that in a minute. That's why I've got those two pipe cleaners just barely out of the shot there. Right here. And the nice thing about the G-Flex is it's got a fairly long uh, open time, so you can, you can work with it. You don't have to rush like you would with a five-minute epoxy. Of course, you also have to let it cure for 24 hours. That's a bit of a downside, but it's worth it for the extra strength. And now we're just going to cover this nice uh, liberal coating. And now I'll put the two pieces together. I like to turn that a bit as they're going together just to spread that around. And yeah, there we go. Just sink that home. So you can see we've got a little puddle of epoxy forming on the outside. And what I do with that is I use an alcohol prep pad. Just a sterile alcohol pad. You can get these at uh, any drugstore. They're used for uh, people with diabetes that have to inject themselves, things like that. Uh, they're like a dollar for a box and they're, they're great for this. So I just go in there and just clean off that excess epoxy. And that should be good. Okay, so we've cleaned off the, the, the outside, but we need to make sure that inside is free of epoxy, and it probably isn't right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tapered pipe cleaner, moving it from the end that doesn't have epoxy in it, so that I'm not dragging epoxy through. I'll just push this through and pull it straight out. And because it's tapered, that's going to get you a little bit more uh, uh, cleaning action at that end. And we'll do the same. And just two is, is enough. Never really had a problem with it. A little bit of fuzz there, but that's okay. That'll clean up. So there we go. That is um, good to go. We're just going to let that sit overnight, uh, 24 hours at least. And we will turn our attention then in the next installment to getting the stummel ready to 
made up with our new bamboo shank. After we do that, we're going to need to work on the ebonite spacer, and then we just put everything together. So we're looking at one, maybe two more installments. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. I, I really appreciate it. I love the comments. Look forward to them greatly. I uh, hope you're enjoying this series and maybe learning something, or at least uh, enjoying it. So until the next installment, you all take care. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.